Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Welcome back to another video. It is time to go out on another treasure hunt. I've been itching to do this for a few weeks. I've taken some time off to focus on some listings. And uh, yesterday I had my best sale of the year. If you remember the estate sale that I went to where I picked up all of those trains, well, one set of those trains sold for $600. So I'm super pumped up and I'm rewarding myself by going out to the flea market, get started there. It's a Sunday, so there's not much else going on uh, today, but uh, there may be at least like one other sale to maybe hit up after that. So let's get on out there and see what we can find. All right, we are here. This is a different view. Haven't really shown you this uh, before. I don't think, maybe once a long time ago. But this is the back side of the uh, last section that I typically uh, walk through. And this is where the vendors will pull in to set up. You see there, they'll take their big uh, box trucks and stuff, and then they will, uh, sorry, a little speed bump there. And then they'll set everything up here. Should be a bit of a lighter crowd because of the 4th of July weekend, but uh, that also means less competition. So we'll see what we can find in there. So you have to be careful with what people write on stickers. This had said 1967 and I had him change it to 1987 because if you look down here, it says 1987. So always check the original source, not what somebody else tells you about it. Okay, so if you see old vintage Teddy Ruxpin, you definitely wanna pick that up every time but not this overproduced type uh, right here. You can see this one's uh, from 2018, also has box damage, so pass on something like that. So this is pretty interesting. It's a Keebler uh, food tray, kind of. Uh, if you look at the back, you could see here, it's something you would set down on a table. Now, problem here is this stain, but I think that we could just take some sandpaper and sand that out of there. Uh, it's light, it should be able to still ship first class, uh, feels less than a pound, and it's from 1984. There's no comps on it, this is one of these gut instinct types of things, but uh, if I get it cheap enough, I'll pick it up. So he wanted two bucks for it, wound up getting it for a dollar, because I told him I'd have to sand out those stains on the back, and he said fine, no problem, so I'm gonna pick this one up for a buck. So I absolutely love finding these pins. Uh, these are old uh, licenses uh, in New York State. These little buttons people used to have to wear them. Uh, the problem is that these are uh, damaged. So you've got to be real careful, even though they're from the 1920s and 1930s, uh, collectors want them in decent shape. And with all these cracks and stuff, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pass on them. I mean, this one's nice, but uh, the vast majority of them are damaged and beat up. So I picked out uh, the three best ones and she wanted 25 for them and I passed. You find them at uh, garage sales for a couple bucks. Okay, so a little point on those little buttons and pins that I just showed you that I passed up for $25. Uh, when she was trying to sell them to me, she told me, well, they're vintage. I said, well, I know they're vintage, but I can't pay $25 for them. Like that would be more close to the retail end of it, not the wholesale price that you're trying to get at a place like a flea market. So I walk away and I overhear her saying to somebody else, well, you know, if I were to have taken these and put them on eBay, then I'd get close to 25 bucks for them. And that's kind of the point and why I don't purchase something like that. Because yes, if you were to have put them on eBay, then yes, you would have got close to $25 for them. But you know what? You didn't put them on eBay. You're set up at a flea market. So by not putting them up on eBay, you've decided you're not gonna take photographs on them. You're not gonna research them. You're not gonna take the time to ship them. You're not gonna take the risk of a return. You wanna sell them at a flea market. So the venue where you sell them is going to affect what you can expect to get out of them in terms of price. Same thing for garage sales and that sort of thing. So just keep that in mind and make sure, especially if you're new, that you realize that when you go out to places like this and people try to use that, well, if I sold it on eBay argument. You're gonna hear that a lot. And you could tell somebody made a bulk pallet tool purchase. That's the business model here. It's like uh, something Craigslist Hunter would set up. 
I really like these as a lot purchase of older 1980s video game instruction manuals if I could get them at the right price. So I'd like to get them for five bucks or less and then sell them out as a lot. Maybe even break them up according to system. But there's so many cool ones in here. It could be something that a video game dealer would want to purchase to have on hand. Either someone who sells online or has their own um, brick and mortar video game store and has games come in and may need an occasional manual to increase the sale price you know, for their game, then this could be something of, uh, of interest. I mean, there's just a ton of them here. So let's see how much they want for them. I love finding these uh, coin books, these blue coin books. If you could get them in bulk, definitely pick them up. There's a whole big stack of them here. I've made a deal with this guy before for comic books and postcards and Mad Magazine, so hopefully I can make a deal for these as well. There's a whole bunch of them here, a nice big stack. Five bucks for the whole stack. Five bucks for the stack? All right. Definitely do that. The advantage of having connections. Make these great deals. Five bucks for all these. Nice. Okay, we're done with the flea market. I'll talk to you about what happened with those video game instruction manuals in just a moment. But uh, did really well with these uh, Whitman coin books for five dollars picking up 18 of them that's about a quarter a piece that's a great deal i've done very well with these in the past i usually find them at estate sales and you could get them cheap people just don't think they're worth much but coin collectors love having these and uh, especially if they could get them in a bulk deal and that's how i sell them i don't sell them individually i sell them in a big bulk so for a stack like this you could probably get as much as 45 dollars out of them for like 18 to 20 uh, so you're not going to get rich off of them, but if you could find them and source them low, it's a, just a quick, easy flip item. Thank goodness I found that, had a relationship with this dealer uh, in the past and getting things in bulk and for low price items. So, you know, he's comfortable with me and making deals like that. And, you know, I just reminded him at the end too, like, hey, listen, you know, make sure you have my card. If you find, you know, any comic book collections, postcards, mad magazines, get in touch with me. So uh, it's always good to remind people about those uh, relationships so they think of you and have you on their head. It's not enough to just give someone a business card and just hope that they're always going to remember it, especially if you've just started the relationship out, you know, one deal, maybe two deals. You know, you've got to sometimes keep it fresh in their head. I just did a video recently on business cards, how to set one up. So go check that one out if you're interested and haven't done that yet for your business. Could really help. I mean, a lot of great deals that way now with regards to the uh, video game instruction manuals we couldn't make a deal it was an older lady who was selling them I thought maybe I could get them for about five bucks like this and maybe flip them for about 40 bucks or maybe a little bit more uh, but the problem is she was selling them for her grandson who wasn't there and her grandson she said told her to sell them for a dollar a piece so in that situation when the person is selling for someone else and that person is not around and they can't get in touch with them you're just not going to be able to make a deal and so you just got to walk away so overall not a killer day didn't really expect there to necessarily be one because again it's fourth of july weekend but i just wanted to get out do a little bit of hunting and i think that there's another garage sale around uh, in an area where i've done well before so i'm gonna go see and check that out and see if maybe we can get anything else before we head back to primetime treasure headquarters let's go this is our last uh spot today to check out few miscellaneous things doesn't look like too much but uh oh well looks like there's some pokemon guys in here too uh, okay i can just pull that thing right up um, looks like there's a funko pop in there yeah that yeah. big giant one yeah okay uh i could i could there's four little ones there's a oh okay Okay, and you got this. All right. What do we got in here? We got some, uh, oh, they're like the little uh, Pokemon plastic, plastic guys too. Yeah. Okay. You said there's some little pops also. Okay. Let's 
Scooby Doo. Oh, Shaggy. Yep. <laughs> Love Shaggy. Who else we got? Yeah, Devil Jim. Okay. We've got Thresh. Oh, yeah. I've seen this one before. And Ash. Yep. Seen that as well. That's the big one. Marin. From Song of the Deep. I don't, I don't even know what that one is. Okay, so that was a great little stop off. Everything I wound up finding was right down at the bottom of that bin. None of the surface finds were good. And that again goes to show that you've got to be willing to do some digging to find the valuable items at certain sales. Not everything is gonna be laying out there right on the surface for you. I mean, who knew that right at the bottom of that bin was a shaggy Funko Pop. This Funko Pop is pretty sought after. This one will sell for as high as $50. More realistic right now would be somewhere in the $30 price range. So I keep that number in my head because if I'm thinking of trying to do some type of bulk deal, then I don't want what I pay for the items to exceed $30. And hopefully I try to get it for less than the $30. So I'll show you what else that I picked up and then what I got every thing for. Uh, I picked up this Devil Gin one because this one will sell for as high as $25, more realistic, will probably be around 15 to 20 bucks for that one. The other Funko Pops were not worth picking up, even that big giant one. It's just not a uh, series that people are looking at and trying to get and trying to pick up. And that's one of the things you have to consider when you're looking at these different types of Funkos. Some of them are overproduced and not worth much, but others are highly sought after depending on the series and depending on uh, how limited they were in production. So the comps, fortunately for those, are very, very easy to check up on just taking out your eBay app and doing a search. Now the Pokemon items were great too. Uh, what I did as far as a sourcing strategy with the plushes is that I took everyone out that had a tag on it and uh, you know it was attached and it was in great shape. So you could see there, there's no damage at all to that one. Uh, there were a few that did not have a tag, so I didn't take them. And there was one that had a tag that was pretty damaged, but these, as you can see, are in great shape. So I wound up taking four of them, show you all of them, and they all have their names on it, so it's very easy to go check comps. Some of these individually sell for as high as, um, and this one, the tag is on the uh, back here in Japanese, uh, will sell for like as high as like $15, something like that. But then you also find the same ones that will sell uh, for less than $10. So my strategy here is to bundle those together and sell them off. Uh, get them out first class mail. They're light, so you could still keep them for under uh, a pound or a pound or less uh, would be first class. And, you know, hopefully get something like 30 bucks or so out of them. Uh, so, you know, you're not making a killing on either one of these uh, sets of items or individual items, but their goal is to add them all up together so that once you do that, you know, it becomes something more significant. And that leads me to uh, the last group of items, which is uh, very popular. So these are the plastic Pokemon figures that you saw in that blue gym bag uh, that was there. And so he just put them all in this plastic bag for me, but they all come from uh, 2007. Uh, there's just a ton of them in here. I could just keep pulling out, like this would be like a separate handful. There's gotta be like 40 plus in there. Uh, they come from 2007. If you're curious, the uh, dates are all on the back like this. And so these will sell for, you know, I just give you like a range. Like if you had like 30 of them, you could get like as high as like 60 bucks out of them. Now I've got other ones uh, back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters that I haven't listed yet. So I could even combine these with them to make an even bigger and better lot. So these are the kind of things that kind of swirl around in my mind when I'm making these deals. But what did I get uh, everything for? Everything 
I got for $20. Not sure how well you could see that. Uh, and you could see there the person initialed the uh, receipt for me for tax purposes. So uh, $20. Uh, this city is uh, really good. This little suburb area that I go to to source, it almost never lets me down. Very, very rarely. Uh, I thought when I walked in there that uh, maybe it wouldn't pan out, but you know, doing that little search on the bottom really paid off. Now we've got to get back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters because uh, I am looking after Daisy myself. Mrs. Primetime is gone for the weekend with the kids. And so let's go check up on Daisy and see what she's doing. All right, we're back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. This is the fun part is seeing Daisy's reaction when I get home. If she hasn't seen me for a while, she gets super pumped up. So let's check her out. Hey, Daisy. Hey, whoa, 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 where are you going? Come back in. No, 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 you gotta come back inside. Where are you going? There you are. Hey, 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 what's up, little girl? Say hi to all your fans. Oh my goodness, what's going on? What have you been doing while I'm gone? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? I hope you didn't cause any problems. Did you make any mess while I was gone? Please say no. Did you? No? Hey, 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 hey. All right, let's take you out for a little walk, and then we'll see what we're going to do from there. All right, bye, Daisy. Come on, let's go. Let's go out for a walk. Come on, crazy head. Come on, crazy head. <laughs> okay, and this is the uh, layout of everything I wound up getting today. Uh, there's actually 30 figures, not 40, but still, that's a good number for everything that I wound up getting there for $20. So... Uh, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's going on in the shed because some of you have asked for updates about that. So let's go check out Primetime Treasure Shed Quarters. All right. So this is basically how I have it set up so far. Uh, I've got a little bit of signage here. I'm going to be adding to that over time. We've got the uh, penguin place right here. I think you probably saw that when I first came in here, but I did add the Aquaman sign. And um, these are the rest of the trains. This is all profit, all these trains. Plus I have another train up right now for uh, 200 and it's got five watchers on it. So uh, excited about the train sets. So um, these are uh, all DVDs that I wound up getting from that storage unit purchase and so they're all here all this was in the garage so getting that out of there and moving it over here was uh was awesome and uh even this chest if you remember i got this at an estate sale for like 10 bucks so that was fun there's a lot of um chinese uh pieces that i need to get up uh they've sold well the ones that i have uh listed before so it's like a lot of uh you know, Chinese dragons, you know, all the different animals that they use to celebrate the different times of the year, like the rooster and I think we've got uh, like an elephant here and stuff like that. And there's bigger pieces in here like rhinoceroses and all sorts of stuff. So uh, I've got some uh, signs that I've picked up before at uh, garage sales and flea markets. Right now I kind of have them for decoration, but I do intend on getting those listed. These are some uh, leftover plane sets that uh, I need to get listed as well. Some uh, license plates and some DVD uh, VCR combo units. These were all in the garage as well as all these collectible glasses that I cleared out of an estate. Uh, these are some tools that I picked up recently and you may remember later on that day when I picked up all these staples and all these other uh, items when we went to that uh, uh, nursery and landscaping place to clear out so everything's here for now so it's just good when I get this stuff I don't have to uh, toss it in the uh, garage anymore and you know clutter that up my son purchased me that so I love that he always calls me super dad so you know that's always fun so nothing um, or not much up here just some daisy related stuff here and you know some tools miscellaneous things that don't have anything to do with the reselling business but you know, it's good to have that and I still have all this additional space up top here and all that stuff so so far so good all right so that's pretty much the update on the shed I hope you enjoyed seeing that uh, I will be periodically coming back in here from time to time 
as it starts to take shape and starts to fill up because it'll be fun to go back and look at that years down the road you know and see just kind of how it evolved over time and you know i got to get some lighting in here maybe we'll do some stuff at night that would kind of be fun i want to get this lit up and things like that so uh anyway if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like button make sure you subscribe uh, make sure you come to the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link is down below. And also make sure that you come to my Instagram account. I put up a whole bunch of cool video clips yesterday. It's exclusive to there. It's not here. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. And lastly, I have to say to Mary McQueen that Daisy really was mad at me yesterday for not saying hi to you as well as part of her fan club along with Esme and Lauren and, and so many others. You're right, I can't possibly name everybody. But, you know, as president of the Ohio fan club for Daisy, she definitely wanted me to make sure I mentioned that or I was going to get in trouble when I walked back in that door. So, all right, I'll see everyone at the next video. Take care.